Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you on this evening. This is Apostle uh, Dr. Susia Smallwood with Matters of the Heart on Eternal Life TV. I bless you on today. God bless you. I hope that uh, you are having a wonderful and joyous day. God is great and he's greatly to be praised for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I do give honor today to God who is the head of my life, to my husband, to my uh, bishop, Bishop Deborah McAlpine, to my apostolic uh, mentor, Apostle Barbara R. Thomas, and to my uh, church family in Maryland, the gathering of the remnant where uh, Bishop Deborah McAlpine is pastor. I honor the Lord today for all of his people, to my spiritual daughter, uh, uh, Chief Apostle Ferguson in uh, Indiana, and my son and daughter, Andrew, Apostle Andrew, and pastor um, in Uganda. I just, uh, Pastor Pamela, I bless the Lord for them on today. For God is a great God, and he's doing great things. God bless you this evening to Apostle Adrian Rogers, to Apostle Margo Moore Valentine, Chief Apostle Margo Moore Valentine. I bless you on today. God bless you, Apostle Sheets. Hallelujah. God bless you, man of God. Uh, to Greater Praise Kingdom, uh, where the Adams, uh, Pastor Adams and uh, co-pastor Lila Adams is pastor in Cary, North Carolina. God bless you on this evening. And so we just thank the Lord today for uh, his goodness and his mercy. Good evening, Bishop Fry and your church family. God bless you. Um, and we just thank the Lord for all that he's doing uh, to the Greater Refuge Church family, to my uh, godson, Minister Darnell Moore, look him up on YouTube, everyone. Uh, he's doing great things in the music industry, and he is saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's support this young man of God and push his music because he's doing a great thing. Just finished a tour in Poland. That is my godson, and I love him dearly. To his mom, uh, Evangelist uh, Donna Moore, God bless you. To Bishop Apostle. Devon Moore, his father, pastor and founder of Greater Refuge in Clinton, Maryland. God bless you on this evening to um, Apostle and Bishop Glasgow with Shaka World Ministries. God bless you on today. God is great and he's greatly to be praised. We're to give honor where honor is due. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Uh, Apostle Adams, Apostle Lee in Greenville, God bless you on today. God is a great God and he's worthy of our praise. I pray that you will get something from the messages on this evening. Firstly, I'm going to bring you a selection and um, I do not own any rights to the music that you will be hearing, but I pray that you will enjoy uh, the selection and it is uh, by Tasha Cobbs. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you on today. I hope you enjoyed uh, that selection by Tasha Cobbs. Break every chain. Hallelujah. And sometimes that's exactly what we need. That's exactly what we need. We need God to break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain that seems to be holding us back. To break every chain that keeps every time we take one step forward, it seems to pull us back. So, Father, right now, God, we come to the throne of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you for your power on this evening, God. We thank you, God, for your anointing today, God. Father, God, we thank you for salvation on today, God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, to Calvary's cross for our sins, oh God. And Lord, we come as humble as we know how, God, asking for forgiveness of our sins on today, God. Lord, forgive us, oh God. 
Oh, God, we ask of, all, of every trespass, every iniquity, God. Lord, forgive us in Jesus' name. Lord, cleanse us, oh, God. Create in us a clean heart, oh, God, and renew a right spirit within us. God, we just thank you, oh, God, for your presence on today, God. Thank you for your presence on today, God. Lord, we welcome you in this place, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. We welcome you, God. We welcome your spirit in this place, God. God. You're welcome here, God. Lord, rest in this place with us, oh God. Abide in my home, God. Abide in my heart, God. Abide, oh God, within me in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you today. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your provision, oh God. Thank you for your protection, oh God. Thank you, God, for being a God that covers us, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for being a covering over us, oh God. For being a protector. To protect us from the things that the enemy tries to set up against us. From the entrapments, oh God, of the enemy. God, we thank you today. We praise you, God, for our leaders on today, God. We thank you, God, for your leaders today, God. That you have in place, God. Lord, we thank you that they would do according to the word, God. That they would veer to the right or to the left of God. That they would give it the way that you've given it to us oh God to give to your people oh God father we pray in the name of Jesus that you would bring correction to those oh God that choose to do it their way instead of your way God we bless your name God and Lord we give it to you God Lord we won't tear them down even if they're wrong oh God but Lord help us to pray for our leaders oh God not just in the spiritual oh God but in every area of their lives oh God our Lord we we pray today for our world leaders, oh God, for our president, oh God, of the United States of America. God, what a sad state America is in today as far as leadership. But God, we thank you because you said that the government would be upon your shoulders. So God, I don't worship no leader. I don't bow to no leader. But, Lord, I worship you and I bow to you because you are my provider, not the government. So, God, I just thank you today for who you are, God. I thank you today for who you are. I thank you for your people, God. Lord, I thank you for those who respect. I thank you for those who accept. I thank you even for those, oh, God, in ministry who reject. But God, know this, hallelujah, that you are not pleased. So God, I just thank you today, God, that those that don't know no better, that think they're in leadership, God, and they don't know protocol, God. Lord, you teach them, God. But Lord, let us continue to pray for them until you take the scales from their eyes, oh God. No matter how high they think they have, they have gone, God, there's a way that they come down, God, that they would think that there's nothing underneath them but solid rock, hard rock earth. God, they're going to fall harder, much harder, much harder. Great will be their fall. But Lord, we thank you anyway, God. We thank you for them because we know you have a way of correction and rebuke even for your leaders that are out of order, God. So we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. And we lift up every leader to you, no matter how disrespectful they may be. God, we lift them up to you, God. We ask that you would correct them, that you would bring them in order, God. Hallelujah. That they wouldn't think more highly of themselves than they are, that they won't think that they have the authority to look down on those that you have set apart, that you have chosen, God, that have gone through and have the battle scars to show it, God. Hallelujah. But Lord, we said give you thanks, God, because at the end of the day, God, we just we realize this, that you are the God that is able to keep us from falling, God. It is no man behind a pulpit, but it is your word, God, and your promise to us, God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, God. So we thank you today, God, for making a way. God, we thank you because you made a way. You made a way, God. You made a 
way, God. When we looked at it, it was all over, God. You made a way. And we're standing here, God, only because you made a way. Hallelujah. I thank you today, God. I honor you today, God. Use me, oh God, as a vessel of honor on today, oh God. Uh, keep my mind and my heart pure, God. Lord, let forgiveness, oh God, let me wear it, oh God. Let me wear forgiveness, God. Let me wear it each and every day of my life, oh God. Because, God, some of the things that I see, God, it could easily turn you the other way. But, God, I choose to do things the correct way because I'm taught in protocol and I know protocol no matter where I am. So, Lord, I just thank you and I praise you, God, that no matter what you do, I still know order and protocol. So, Lord, I just honor you. Thank you, God, for goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless your people today. Bless your people today, God. Bless your sheep today, God. Let them know that their pastor is not their God. Let them know that you are our heavenly father. Father God, you are our heavenly father, not man. So, Lord, we thank you. Not one man, but you are God. Your son, Jesus, is our uh, savior on today. Not your pastor. Your pastor can't shake your hand. Hallelujah. And give you salvation. Salvation is a gift from God, but it caused uh, our heavenly father the life of his son, Jesus, his only begotten son. So it may be free to you, but it wasn't free to our heavenly father. It wasn't free to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, because he died for us. So, Father, we thank you that we will not lead people to man, but we'll lead people to God. And we won't just lead them there, but we will teach them how to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's not enough that you just come and join the church, but you must be saved. You must be sanctified from the things of this world. We must allow God to take us through the process of sanctification and to fill us with this Holy Spirit. So, Father, we thank you today. We praise you today. We honor you today for what you're going to do, for what you are doing. Hallelujah. And for who you are, King of kings and Lord of lords, God, we honor you today, God. Lord, I bow before you today, God. I reverence you. I reverence your word. I reverence your house today, God, and I honor the vessels that you have chosen, God, to carry forth your word. Thank you, God. These and all blessings, let your word, God, not return void because the word declares it, and I believe it. It will not return void in Jesus' precious and holy name. We ask these and all blessings. Keep us, God, that we may be kept. Keep us in our health. Keep us in our mind. Keep us in our mind. Keep us, God, that we would not think so high of ourselves, that we got everything together, that whatever we're doing, that we're doing such a great work in the earth and that it's all about us when it has nothing to do with man. It should be all about God, not about an idol, but about God. Everything I do, I do it as unto the Lord. Yes, I know I had four fathers that went before me, but I don't do no work for my forefather. I do it as unto the Lord because I don't do idol worship. So if I attribute what I do to the forefathers and those that went before me, that is idolatry. But I honor the Lord and I give God the praise and the glory for whatever I'm doing now. It's because of God. It is because of grace and mercy and the love of God and the salvation that only comes through Jesus Christ. And God, I thank you and I praise you even now, God, for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. I'm coming from the 60, from the book of Psalms, the 68th book. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, you can hear some foolishness. You can hear a whole lot of stuff that really gets me fired up. Hallelujah. Thing that makes no sense whatsoever. But even in the midst of that, you got to keep on going. 
Glory to God. All glory, all power belong to God, to no man. Hallelujah. I don't care what man has done. I don't give no man no credit. Ah, uh, yeah, what you did that, okay? You did it with the grace of God, but it wasn't because of no power of yours. Hallelujah. We honor you today. Hallelujah. Bless God bless the airways. We thank God for Eternal Life TV and the visionary. Hallelujah. God is a wonderful God. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about the joy that comes from spreading the good news, the joy. You should be happy. You should be pleased in your spirit. You should have joy. You should have joy. Not just that you spread it, the gospel in the church, but as you go from place to place and you spread the gospel of Jesus, the gospel should bring you joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In verse 1, it said, May God be merciful and bless us. May his face shine with favor upon us. May your ways be known throughout the earth. Your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations Praise you, O oh God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Glory to God. The gospel is to be preached to every nation. And wherever the gospel is preached, if it's preached according to the word of God, it should bring joy. Not only should the gospel bring joy, it should bring freedom. The gospel should bring peace. The gospel should bring forgiveness of sin and from one to another. But we know we got many Christians and believers sitting right beside themselves, if not beside themselves, in the same church. And they don't like each other. But heaven can't use you until you learn how to forgive. Because God can't forgive you until you learn how to forgive. You don't have no joy with unforgiveness in your heart. Now, I, I hate to tell you that, but... At the end of the day, I'm going to tell you anyway, and you just take it as you hear it or not. But I'm still going to release it because it's not, the blood is not on my hands. God has no part with you if you cannot forgive. You don't have no part with joy if you have unforgiveness in your heart. And I don't care what the person did. God commands us to forgive. You're not God. And if God forgave people who did all kinds of things to a sinless God, who are you? Who do you think you are that you are so great and wonderful that you cannot forgive? No, I'm sorry, darling, but you must forgive. You must forgive your sister and your brother. And I'm not talking about biological but if they're born again believers, I don't care how they have offended you. You must forgive them. I didn't say you had to hang with them. But you must forgive them. And don't tell me you've forgiven them. If every time you get around them, you try to avoid them. Because that's a lie you haven't forgiven. True forgiveness True forgiveness. God can even take the memory of that thing away. Hallelujah. And when you're around the person, guess what? God won't even allow your mind to even go back to that place. Because now instead of having those thoughts and those emotions, God will give you brand new thoughts on what is good. What is of a good report. What is praiseworthy? 
You talk about the one, the wonderful works of God. We talk about the salvation and the love of God, the peace of God. The righteousness of God, the justice of God, the ways of God. So many great attributes of God that we can talk about as opposed to those things that cause us to feel hurt and wounded to the place that we can't forgive and that we have no joy. God wants us to have joy. He wants us to have joy. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to be able to fellowship together and to love one another. Not a fake love, not a fake hug, not a fake smile. Mm -mm. But he wanted to be real because Jesus is real. Jesus is real. And he's real kind and he's real merciful and he's long suffering. He's meek. He's humble. And we have to have a humble spirit. A humble spirit. So that when the word is being taught or ministered, you can receive the word and you don't feel like that you know everything that the preacher knows. And because you've read a chapter, now that makes you an authority on the word of God. But God didn't give you the authority to be the shepherd. So you need to be quiet. Be quiet and listen. So that your joy can be restored. But if you're up there trying to compete with your shepherd, you already, you got the wrong motive. you in the wrong house. Your spirit is not right. And you need to be at the altar. Your pastor is not there to compete with you. He's there to teach, to lead, to correct, to rebuke, to encourage, to push, to draw, to birth out the gift that he sees that God has in you, to motivate you, to love you. And to even be a father to you when it's needed. To let you know that no matter what, you can still have joy. Because the joy of this world is not real joy. Because it soon fades away. But when you have joy in the Lord, when you have joy through the presence of God, when you have joy just by reading a passage of scripture, when, when you read it and you get excited about it, that's the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You don't, where's your strength? You don't have no joy. Where's your strength? You can't tell me about how strong you are, oh, but every time I turn around, you moping and you complaining and you're groaning and you're sighing and your head is down and this is wrong and that's wrong and this is wrong and that's wrong. Where's your joy? Where is your strength? Where's your strength? You're hanging around the wrong folk and you're not spending enough time in your word. You're not spending enough time in your one-on-ones with God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. We got to spread the, the news of good news of the gospel. The good news of the gospel everywhere we go. Every time there's an opportunity for you to tell someone about the love of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God, salvation, the peace of God. The holiness of God, the blessings of God. You should be taking that opportunity seriously. Because everybody, everybody don't have that opportunity. Everybody is not even able to speak. But if God give us a voice, then you should be speaking those things that bring glory to God. Not things that bring shame to the body of Christ or to your leader or to other Christians. Born again Christians. Believers in Jesus Christ. 
You could be born again, but born again in what? Born again believers in Jesus Christ. So may the nations praise you. May your ways be known throughout the earth. So throughout the earth, it's going to take messengers. Someone, the airways, the TV, someone is going to have to carry the good news of the gospel throughout the earth. Throughout the earth. Every nation, every nation, God wants his word to be shared there so they will know of the love of God. So they can turn and come back and give their lives to Christ. So they can receive salvation. So they will know that God loves them. Hallelujah. May the nations praise you, O oh God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. I'm going to look at um, another verse. Uh, I think it's in Deuteronomy, I believe it is. It's Deuteronomy uh, chapter 10, verse 35, saying, It came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, Rise up. Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them who hate you flee before you. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. My God. The word has to be spread to every nation. Hallelujah. Yes, may all the nations praise you. How glad the nations will be singing for joy because you govern them with justice. God governs the nations with justice. Now, we can't expect justice to be rendered to a born-again believer by a carnal system. Because they're gonna call, they're gonna judge you according to uh, what they believe, and what they believe is carnal. But spirit judge spirit, carnal judges carnal. You judge them with justice, and direct the actions of the whole world. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Now, this is in verse 3, and here it is in verse 5. It's repeating itself. That means God is reinforcing the fact that every nation should be praising God. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Allah, but God, Yeshua. Glory to God. You better know what you're praising. Not your pastor, not your bishop, not your archbishop, not someone that is dead and buried. Thank God for the contributions they make, but I'm not worshiping you. I'm not. I'm worshiping a risen Savior. I don't care what you did. What you did, you did. Thank God for Jesus that you did it. But I will not worship you. That is idolatry. I will not do it. Yes, you did a great work. Many people, uh, the, the apostles did a good work. But God never told us to worship no apostle. And my work today is not, I ain't worshiping no apostle for what they did. I'm worshiping God for what he did because he died for me. He did. And the apostles and the prophets, they did many good works. The, the pastors, even in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, the apostles did a great work. 
But he didn't tell us to worship them. No, indeed. I honor them. But no, my work is unto the Lord. No, indeed. What you did, you did. That's what God told you to do. Maybe. I don't know. But I know this. I know I don't worship nobody that's dead. And I'm not going to. I worship God, who is a true and living God. Yes, he is risen. But my God is not dead. He's alive. We better be careful. We better be careful that we don't step over into idolatry because it is so close. We better be careful. What we're doing should be based on what the finished work, what Jesus did on the cross and nobody else. Be careful. Be careful that you don't practice idolatry. And all your work that you've done, you hear God say, depart. He never told us to worship another human being for what they did. We honor them, but you don't worship them. You don't worship no leader. What's wrong with you? Did no leader die for you? You don't love God? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Yes. May the nations praise you. May the nations praise you. May they thank you. May they worship you. May they praise you. May they celebrate you. Honor you. Glory to God. Said then. Oh my God. Now we get to the then. Said then the earth will yield its harvest. My God, and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us. And people all over the world will fear him. Now, that was the 67th book of Psalm. It says, yes, yes. Then the earth will yield its harvest. And God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us. And people all over the world will fear him. My God. That's, that's the word of God. That is the word of God. Let's look at Leviticus. 26 and 4. Yeah, I have two Bibles here. I do. Because I don't want to keep uh, flipping from one uh, space to the other. So I, I'm using two Bibles. 26, Leviticus 26 and 2. Um, Leviticus 26 and 2. Let's see what it's saying here. Okay. That's 25. Leviticus 26 and 2 says, You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Wow. You know what? I'm going to read Leviticus 26 and 1 where it talks about no idolatry. No idolatry. You shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths, and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If and then and it it, it, uh, it, it gives um this breakdown. Say if any other God is worshipped, there can be no Sabbath, sabbat sabbatical, sabbatical rest. The rest we now have in Christ is based solely upon His finished work and our faith 
anchored in that sacrifice. If the preacher is not preaching the cross, already his hearers placing their faith in something else, whether they realize it or not, they are serving another Jesus, which pure and simple is idol worship of some sort. That is the great sin of the modern church. The modern church has had a tendency to set up false idols and they worship it. They worship things instead of God. They worship things. They worship people. They worship accomplishments. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. Our compliment, accomplishments is not our strength. Our automobiles is not our strength. And it can't give you any strength. Our homes and land is not your strength. Because get down sick and tell me how much can your house and your land do for you. The joy of the Lord and the knowledge of his word gives you strength. The Bible tells us that I sent my word and my word healed them. So let's not make idols out of things, out of anything, because idols are a sin. No matter how you look at it, you might think what you're doing is not a sin, but let me help you out. Even if you're worshiping a dead person, that is idol worship. Because we're supposed to be serving our risen Savior. And Jesus, the Bible tells us that our God is a jealous God. And you can have no other God before him. You can't worship what nobody did that's dead. They did, they did, they did their work. My work ain't based on nothing they did. I thank God for, for I have... Uh, uh, bishop that are passed on that imparted to me and I thank God they were forerunners I thank God for what they did but what I'm doing no indeed I'm not worshiping you for it I worship God I worship God I thank God for how he used you to impart to me but sweetheart I don't bow to no man I don't bow to no woman uh uh no I don't no it is God that I worship it is God that I reverence, I honor man. And But guess what? We can make idols out of the preachers, the pastors, but you can't even anoint, you can't even honor his anointed vessels. You can't even honor another pastor. You can't even honor another apostle. Why? Because you got so much idolatry going on around you, you don't even know anointing when you see it. Hello, somebody. Yes, I said it. Because it's the truth. I just wish that people had a real revelation of who God was, of who Jesus is, who Jesus is. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. Stop worshiping things that you shouldn't be worshiping. Don't worship clothes. They're made by man. Worship God. He robes, he, uh, he dresses the, the flowers along the sidewalks up and down the field. He clothes them. What more won't he do for us? We don't have to worry about things like that. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He said, in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. He said, no good thing would he withhold from me. He said, ask, seek, and knock. My God. So why are we not asking? Why are we not seeking? Why are we not knocking? Why are we knocking on the pastor's door instead of knocking on the word of God? And, and why are we not on our knees seeking the Lord?
but you're trying to chase your pastor down. Your pastor is not God, and he does not have your answer. God does. And that doesn't mean that your pastor does not counsel you. Yes, they do, because that's why God placed them in, in place. But God never, ever, uh, he said, I give you pastors after my heart. He didn't say that pastors gave you God after the pastor's heart. He said, I give you pastors after my heart. So if he gave you the pastor, then he'll give the pastor what to say to you. So you still glorify God which is in heaven, and not man, which is on earth. God will not share his glory. He won't share his glory. All glory belongs to God. He won't share his glory. He's a jealous God. You better get your joy back. You better get your peace back. You better walk in victory to get your joy back. You better walk in victory to get your peace back. You better walk in victory so you can get your hope back. And that's not going to come from your pastor. Your pastor is going to feed you the word. He'll feed you the word. You are to take in that word. Digest it. And allow that word to manifest the fruit of the spirit in your life. Not just in that house, but everywhere you go. And your pastor will recognize it. He will see it. But not just your pastor. Others will see it also. But please stop worshiping people. People, please. Stop getting excited about some of the things, some of the, Lord Jesus, what, what I want to call it. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Trust me, I do. Um, entertainment that occurs in the pulpit. Many times you see more entertainment than you see the anointing of God going forth. Don't get excited about being entertained because God never told us that he needed us to entertain him. He said he desired the praises and the worship. He inherits the praises of the people. God inherits our praises. He, he wants us to worship him. He said let everything that have breath praise thee the Lord. He didn't say that let everybody that can move entertain him. He didn't say that. He didn't say that he wanted all of us to entertain. Oh, yes, dancing is fine. But you better make sure it's the spirit and not the spirit of the world that you just transferred into the pulpit. Because much of it looks in the nightclub. Lord, where is this joy coming? Let's say this. I'm saying it, and I stand behind it. Make sure that your joy... It's coming from God and not the joy juice that you drank before you entered into his house. Hello. I know that's not going to go over well, but yes, I said it and I meant it. Some of y'all are still intoxicated and you'll shout like a fool. But all you're doing is trying to sober up because you've been drunk all night. Make sure that when you are shouting, you know what you are shouting about. I'd rather hear the word of God and be able to take something back, a nugget from that word that will help me to stand through the week. If I don't dance, not one iota. I don't have to even do nothing but wave my hand. But I want to hear that word, and I want that word to be hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Because, you see, I want to take my joy back. I want to walk in victory. I want to walk in victory. I want to get my peace back. I want to get my hope back. I want to get my family back. 
I want to get my anointing back. I want my power back in the Holy Ghost. I want to get my praise life back. I want to have a life of praise, a life of worship. If I don't never dance, give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. Lord, don't let it be too late. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you, Lord. Lord, don't let it be too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you, Lord. Everything else can wait. Give me you, Lord. Please don't let it be too late. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees, crying out to you. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees, crying out to you, Lord. Give me you, Lord. Everything else can wait. Give me you, Lord. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you, Lord. Oh, give me you. Give me you, Lord. Lord, give me you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you, Lord. I hope I'm not too late. Just give me you. Just give me you. Just give me you, Lord. Just give me you. Give me you, Lord. Lord, give me you. Give me you, Lord. Lord, give me you. Give me you, Lord. Lord, give me you. Give me you, Lord. Everything else can wait. Give me you, Lord. I hope I'm not too late. But give me you, Lord. Lord, give me you. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on my knees. Lord, I'm crying out. I'm crying out to you to give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you, Lord. Lord, give me you. Just give me you. Nothing else will do, Lord. Just give me you, Lord. Just give me you. Give me you. Give me you. Give my joy back, Lord. Lord, give me you. I want my peace back, Lord. Lord, give 
give me you, give me you, Lord, give me my praise back, Lord, give it back, I just need you, I just want you, Lord, Lord, I can do anything with you, Lord, for greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Lord, I want to have you, just more of you, more of you, Lord. I just want you, hallelujah, we bless the Lord today, just give me you, everything else can wait, just give me you, and I can have my joy back. Give me you. I can have my praise back. Give me you. I can get my peace back. Give me you. I can have my power back. Give me you. And my anointing will come back. Give me you, God. You. Only you, God. Only you. Only you, God. Hallelujah. I bless you today. I bless your name, God. That as we spread your word... Across every nation, God, that they will know that the joy of the Lord is their strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. We rejoice in your name, God. We rejoice in the wondrous works of your hand, God. We rejoice in your son, Jesus, God. We rejoice, God. In the power of the Holy Ghost, God, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you today for your word, God. Lord, give me my joy back. Give me my joy. Restore my joy, God. Hallelujah. Don't allow me to be worshiping idols, God, and not even know it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No idolatry is going to stand in the eyesight of God. Hallelujah. For it is a sin. Glory to God. He's God and he's God alone. Glory to God. We bless the Lord today for Eternal Life TV. And again, this is Apostle Dr. Susia Smallwood, founder and host of Matters of the Heart on Eternal Life TV. As the message is going forth, you will see a telephone number. Feel free to call the number if you desire prayer. And be sure uh, you see the cash app there if you uh, God touches your heart that you desire to sow a seed into the ministry, feel free to do so. Know that I love you and that I'm praying for you and your families. I'm praying for the other ministries. I'm praying for other nations. And I bless the Lord. I bless the Lord who is the lover of my soul. For without God, I could do nothing. So until the next time, until the next session, Hallelujah. I bring you greetings with matters of the heart. And I pray, I pray, I pray that you give your life to God, that you invite God into your heart, that you repent of your sins and ask God to become Lord of your life. In Jesus' name, this is Apostle Smallwood with Matters of the Heart signing out. God bless you.